Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the murder at Haversham Manor. Can I kindly test that all phones and other electronic devices are turned off? And please note that, uh, please note that photography of any kind is strictly prohibited. Also, if you find a Katy Perry CD box set in the auditorium anywhere, the personal item I like want it back. Please shop it at my text box at the end of the show. Enjoy the performance. All right. Okay. Four lights up on act one. Note to cast, Winston is still missing, and we need to find him before the guard dog scene. That's fine, that's fine. So, cast, cast. This is supposed to be a plus 30. What is Annie doing on stage? Oh, so Chris can do his stupid speech. Leave it, just leave it. You need it. We don't have time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cornerly Polytechnic Drum Society presentation of The Murder of Havisham Manor. <laughs> now, allow me to introduce myself. I am Chris Bean, I'm the director, and I'd like to personally welcome you to what will be my directorial debut and first production as head of the Drama Society. Firstly, I would like to apologize to those of you involved in our little box office mix-up. I do so hope the 67 of you affected will enjoy our little murder mystery almost as much as you would have enjoyed the women's basketball game. <laughs> now, we are particularly excited to be performing this play because for the first time in the society's history, we have managed to find a play that fits the number of society members perfectly. If we are being honest, a lack of members has hampered past productions, such as last year's Chekhov play, Two Sisters. <laughs> last Christmas's The Lion and the Wardrobe. <laughs> or indeed, our summer musical, Cat. <laughs> of course, this will be the first time the society has been able to stage a play of this size and scale, and we are thrilled. It is no secret that we usually have to contend with a smaller budget, as was evident in our recent production of Roald Dahl's classic, James and the Peach. <laughs> of course, during the run of that uh, particular show, uh, the Peach we had went off, and we were forced to provide a hastily devised alternative entitled, James, where's your Peach? <laughs> anyway, on to the main event, which I am certain will be our best show yet. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please put your hands together. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. For Susie H.K. Bridewell's thrilling who done it, the murder of Havisham Manor. He was right as rain an hour ago. 
I don't understand. He could be dead. He was as fit as a fiddle. It doesn't make sense. Of course it makes sense, Perkins. He's been murdered! Good God. Where's Lloyd's? She's in the dining room, sir. Shall I fetch her? At once, Perkins, and quickly. Charles Havisham has been murdered. But she's bound to have one of her hysterical episodes. Damn it, Perkins. Gather everyone in here! Charles Havisham is dead! Round to dining room. Cecil, Miss Collymore, come to Charles' private rooms at once. Charles Havisham has been murdered. But do you think it was murder, Perkins? Or do you think perhaps it was suicide? <laughs> suicide? Mr. Havisham? Not possible. Never was there a man with more zest for life than Charles Havisham. He was young, rich, and soon to be married. Why on earth would he commit suicide? But why on earth would anybody want to murder him? Charles was such a gentle fellow. Generous, kind, and true, Bill and Ruffus. He never had an enemy in his life. Until today, it seems. Shall I telephone the police, sir? The police? They want to make it out here for days in this snowstorm. Inspector Carter. He lives just the other side of the village. Quickly, Perkins, hand me the phone. <laughs> Thank you, Perkins. <laughs> Good evening. Give me Inspector Carter. I know it's late. Damn it. I don't care about the weather. There's been a murder. Someone's murdered Charles Havisham. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right! Thank you. He's on his way. Inspector Carter. They say he's the best damn inspector in the district. He'll crack this case and quick. Very good, sir. And what shall I do? Lock every door, man. Not a soul gets out of Havisham Manor until the killer is found. <laughs> At once, sir. And assemble everyone in. Yes, sir. Good God. Charles Havisham dead. What a... Oh, 
Should be another one in the cabinet. Yes, sir, of course you're right. This one's full. <laughs> this is horrifying. I mean, who on earth would have had a motivation to murder Charles Papish? I can't imagine. It's madness. My man was a good man. Who would kill him? I'm shocked, Thomas. As am I, Settle. As am I. My brother murdered in his own home. This is unthinkable. This is more than my nerves can take. Oh, it's simply can't bear it. Thomas, I think I'm becoming hysterical. No, Florence, not another one of your episodes. Calm yourself. Here, take one of your pills. Snowstorm. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Inspector Carter. Take my case. I take it this is Charles Havisham. I'm sorry. This must be giving you all a damn shock. Naturally. Tell me, are any of you the deceased immediate family? I'm Professor Havisham. I'm his brother. I'm Florence Collymore, his fiancée. Tonight is our engagement party. I take it everyone is assembled here? Indeed. The only other member of staff is Arthur the Gardener, but I saw him and Winston leaving for the weekend hours ago. Winston, he's Scarlet Dog. Very well. Have you poured everyone a sip drink? Yes, Inspector. Well, let's all raise a glass. <laughs> Drop 
won't forgive me. The sooner I can begin my inquiries, the sooner I can get to the bottom of this ghastly business. Would you be so kind as to take the body up to the study so I can examine it? Yes, Inspector. I'll lend you a hand, Sergeant. Then, lock all the doors to the house and prepare this room. I shall begin my inquiries in here afterwards. There could be a number of things. Suffocation, strangulation, poison. But before examining the body, I wouldn't like to say. Poison, Inspector? Surely not. Oh, uh, try not to think about this. Try more. <laughs> Finish upstairs. I'll speak to everyone individually, and then you can get some space and calm your nerves. Thank you, Inspector. It's all more than I can bet. <laughs> Charles's private study. Set the body down there, gentlemen. It's a tragedy for a man to die just three months before he is to be married. I can't stand it. Just look at him. Lying there. <laughs> this is most morbid. Morose indeed. Cecil, <laughs> we must tread carefully. It would be easy to prove us to be implicated in Charles' death. If they found out about it, we'd be suspect. We were having an affair. So what? It doesn't make sense. Okay. Certainly we killed the man. Well, of course not, but that's the inspector will think. It's fine. We'll just carry on as if everything. If everything isn't just as it was. And soon we can be together and not keep secrets. Soon, my love, but first, with Charlie finally out of the picture, I must ask you one question. Thomas, Inspector. 
Now I need you both to pull yourselves together and help me test the body for fingerprints. Yes, Inspector. Oh, Lata! <laughs> now I have to test the body for fingerprints. Inspector. What was that? <laughs> I could have. I could have sworn I just saw him breathing. Uh, nonsense, Collymore. This man is dead. <laughs> oh, Morris! Would you give me the honor of becoming my wife? Marry me! Take it down to the service quarters to the corner to collect in the morning. Yes, Inspector. Check all the doors are locked, Perkins. <laughs> and perhaps, Collymore, you could fetch me a pencil in my notebook from downstairs. Naturally.
sorry to have kept you, but now that I've finished examining the body, our interviews can proceed. Perkins, bring in Charles' personal effects. Yes, Inspector. Whatever you like. Set them down there on the mantel. When did you and your fiancé first meet? Only seven months ago. But my brother has known Venice since school. We met at the local gala. He would love us first sight. I knew the moment I met him that he was the man I wished to marry. Ah, I seem to have run out of paper. Would you like to wonder if there's such thing as rushing, Inspector? Did you ever feel like you were rushing into this marriage? Why wouldn't I love him then? Did you love him then? How could anyone have benefited? Can you think of anyone who might have benefited from your fiancé's death? Cecil? Not even Cecil. I wasn't having an affair. Don't raise your voice to me, Inspector. You were having an affair! <laughs> Don't tell me to calm down! Calm down, Miss Clover! Ah! <laughs> but why did you find it? I found your letter. 
the one who dressed herself a ring in your hand to carry your love for him and take out the thought of marrying Charles and post you. Charles, what is this? I got no clue where to get my I'll tell you what I found it. In Charles' pocket. Charles, what is this? It was suicide. Indeed. Ah! <laughs> or a murder. Conceived by yourself and Cecil so you could be together. Charles, who could have killed you? 
Everyone under this damn roof seems guilty. Oh. That's weird. There seems to be something under these cushions. What's this? A ledger? <laughs> a ledger. A ledger. A ledger. A ledger. A ledger. What? 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 Stop shouting at me! This isn't a game show! I can see you too! Good lord! You not know, you people not know how this works! What? Oh my god. How hard is it to just have a nice, simple play? I know everything hasn't gone exactly to plan, but you don't have to shout at me, so just stop it! I swear to God, if one more of you say under the couch, Bertie! It's a sheriff's lock! There's nothing even there! What? What's it? Why are you. Elijah! Ah! Oh, a ledger. <coughs> With Charles' initials inscribed on the front. Let me see. Notes, bills, and... What's this? A newly written last will and testament dated only today? Let me see. Uh, I, Charles Havisham, do hereby amend my last will and testament to leave my possessions, money, and Havisham man to one good lord. Inspector, Thomas Collymore for you. Ah, uh, thank you, Cecil, but before I can interview Mr. Collymore, there's some papers I'd like to review up in the study. Do you take your I time, Inspector. I shall return presently, Cecil. Do take your time, Inspector. Inspector. Tell me, Thomas, did you manage to find Lawrence? And what were your feelings about Thomas and Lawrence and Charles and Lawrence's engagement? Well, I was overjoyed, of course. I loved Lawrence and I loved Charles. I couldn't have approved more of the match. Come now, Colin Moore. We all know you're overprotective of your sister. At half past eleven in the evening? Yes! Then hand me the receiver, Cecil.
Thomas Corley Moore speaking. My recent bank deposits, what of them? Discrepancies? What are you talking about, man? Gone? Gone where? 9,000 pounds stolen? Good God, man! Perkins, get in here! Yes, sir. Bring me my bank book, Perkins. Your bank book, sir. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Your pen, sir. speaking with or report to you to your superiors. Mr. Fitzroy, I'll write that down. <laughs> Mr. Fitz <laughs> Okay, Fitzroy. I'll have you know you put me in quite a difficult position. I don't know who authorized those transactions, but you find out who did, and you call me back at once! <laughs> what was it, Thomas? 9,000 pounds of personal savings stolen from my bank account. Good Lord! What a ghastly evening. Thomas! I'm afraid I have a confession to make. Yes? Me and Florence are having an affair. What? <laughs> what? You and my sister. Whoa! Now calm down, Collie Moore. You always swore a snake in the grass, Cecil. Whoa! It's not what you think. We're in love. My sister has not loved you. How dare you? Your own brother's fiance. It's disgusting, really. No wonder your father hated you. Don't speak about my father, Thomas. Ah! Oh, it's not real. It's real. <laughs> the time has come for you to answer to me for your indiscretions. Draw your s <laughs> on guard. but no match for me. Sometimes I forget your child's younger brother. You're so pathetic. Call me pathetic again, Thomas! Ah! Kashaw! Ah. Take one of these, Ooh. and one of these, ah. and one of yeah. those! Ah. Swipe! <laughs> I always was too quick for you, but still, not bad calling him. Yes! Swipe! The swipe! You have a good parry, Collymore. 
good parry. I'll show you a good parry! so calm and collected in situations such as these. It comes from years of experience, indeed. <laughs> What's important is that we all must remain calm and not let each other out of our sights. Where's Miss Collymore? Well, she's no, coming no, now. No, 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 this evening. <laughs> Thomas, I'm frightened. <laughs> there, there, Florence. You're safe in here with me. <laughs> What's happening, sir? Um, isn't it obvious? Cecil has lost control. Oh, no. Not he murdered Charles tonight. Driven mad by his lust for you. And now he knows we found him out. I cannot bear it. Kiesel would not do such a thing. <laughs> Save me, brother. <laughs> Save me, brother. There, there, Florence. I shan't let anyone hurt a hair on your head. I'm panicking. Ah! I can't see Kiesel. Cecil! Cecil! He's doing this! Try to relax, Miss Colimo. I shall faint. You shan't faint. Ah! Confound it! <laughs> what a devil of a situation this is. Now, we're not so fast in fair. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Now, we're all going to survive tonight, you hear me? Mm. Indeed we are, Mr. Collymore. <gasps> Take cover! Great Scott! Good heavens! Amy! Don't panic! Cecil's crossing the landing. We must lock him out! Quickly, Perkins, where are the keys to the door? They're here, sir! <laughs> Hand them to me quickly, Perkins! <laughs> we must lock Cecil up before he gets burst in! <clears throat> No, oh, no, no, no! Good Lord! Good Lord! Cecil's dead. <laughs> A double murder.
Katy Perry. <laughs> and some time of death, chord to mid, five o'clock. Cecil. No, no, no. I loved him. I loved him. I know it was wrong. I know I was engaged to Charles. <laughs> but Cecil was mine, aunt. I was his. There, there, Miss Collymo. How will I go on, sobs? You! Take this body outside! Yes, Inspector. Make it I'll lend you a hand, Perkins. Now, I'll tell you what. I've seen an awful, awful lot in the last 20 years I've been an inspector. But two murders in one evening? Well, I'm sorry, but that's certainly unusual. <laughs> Try to remember your breathing, Miss Collymore. Now it's not the time for another of your episodes. I am having an episode, Inspector. I cannot help it. Just no. Florence, control yourself, girl. She's having another one of her episodes. They're dead, they're gone, and they're never coming back. I will not tolerate another one of your tantrums, Florence. Get away from me, Thomas. You don't understand my grief. That's enough. <laughs> Take one of your pills. No, not my pills! They're mints! <laughs> But who could have killed? <laughs> but who could have killed him? That's a good question, Mr. Collymore. And one we need to answer quickly if we're going to get out of this house alive. Oh, Inspector, you've given me a chip. Woo! <laughs> Perkins, pour us all another scotch. Of course, Inspector. <laughs> now tell me, is there anyone else you know of in the grounds other than the four of us? Not a soul. The gardener left at six. The only other member of staff is Perkins. <laughs> Good God! I needed that! <laughs> Does anyone else have access to the grounds? No one, Inspector. I'm the only one with the master key, and as instructed, I locked and bolted all the doors as soon as you arrived. Then who could have killed him? That's a good question, Mr. Collymore. And one we need to answer quickly if we're going to get out of this house alive. Oh, Inspector, you've given me a chew? Perkins, pour us all another scotch. <laughs> of course, Inspector. <laughs> now, uh, now, now tell me, is there anyone else you know of in the grounds other than the four of us? Not a soul. The guard on the fit six, the only other member of staff is Perkins. Good God, I needed that! <laughs> Does anyone else have access to the grounds? 
No one, Inspector. I'm the only one with Master Key, and as instructed, I locked and bolted all the doors as soon as you arrived. Well, then who could have killed him? That's a good question, Mr. Cullimore. <laughs> and one we need to answer quickly. We're going to get out of this house alive. Oh, Inspector, you've given me a chance. Perkins, pour us all another scotch. <laughs> of course, Inspector. Now tell me, is there anyone else you know of in the grounds other than the four of us? Not a soul. The gardener left at six. The only other member of staff is Perkins. <laughs> Good God! I needed that! Does anyone else have access to the grounds? No one is. I'm the only one with the master key. And as instructed, I locked and bolted all the doors as soon as you arrived. Then who could have killed him? That's a good question, Mr. Collymore. Uh, and what we need to answer quickly if we're going to get out of this house alive? Oh, Inspector, you're giving me a chance. Perkins, pour us on another scotch. Uh, of course, Inspector. Now tell me, is there anyone else you know of in the grounds other than the four of us? That's all. The guard at number six, the only other member of staff is Perkins. <laughs> good God, I needed that. Does anyone else have access to the grounds? Yes. I really wanted the master key, and as instructed, I locked and bolted all the doors as soon as you arrived. Then who? Who could have killed him? That's uh, a good question, Mr. Cullimore. Ah, I'm going to answer quickly. We're going to get out of this house alive. Oh, Inspector, give me a chance. Perkins, pour us all the scotch. Of course, Inspector. Now tell me, is there anyone else you know of in the grounds other than the four of us? The guard on number six, the only other member of staff is Perkins. Ah. that so many of you have returned for the second act. <laughs> Obviously, I would be lying if I said everything in the first act went as rehearsed. There may have been one or two minor snags, which you may or may not have picked up on. But nevertheless, they are snags you would expect to see in any production. And this certainly isn't the worst first act that Corn Lee has seen by some stretch. Why, just last year, due to a casting error, Cornley Polytechnic Drum Society was forced to put on Snow White and the Seven Tall Broad Gentlemen. <laughs> anyway... No, it's going quite badly, to be honest, Mom. Uh, before we begin... Oh, uh, yeah, she's still unconscious, and we can't find the dog anywhere. Shut up! Uh, sorry. Before we begin again, one quick word of health and safety administration. May I please ask anyone who consumes any of the M&Ms available during the intermission, please seek medical help immediately. <laughs> now, I'd like to present to you the concluding act of The Murder of Havisham Manor.
Good God, you're right. It's one of us. <gasps> this is a disaster. And it's not over yet. Two murders in one night at Havisham Manor. What a grisly evening. Frightful, brother, frightful. Brother, frightful. Sector half Look, Mr. Connell, the snow's gone outside. He's built it. No, I think it's in the special boundaries. If we're not careful, we'll be snowed into this slaughterhouse. We must discover the guilty man. Indeed. The gun shots were heard in the library. I shall investigate the room. Yeah, you, have it on me. you all remain yeah, here. Yeah, well, game. It's fine. This whole it's business is a disgrace. Oh. Let us remind ourselves of what we know. We know that John Rose Havisham was murdered here in his own private rooms on the night of his engagement party. We know that his fiancée was involved in an affair with his own brother, Seth How could my sister behave in such a way? Not now, Thomas. We know that he, too, was murdered here on the same eve in cold blood. The only thing we don't know is who the murderer is. Oh, the tension in this house. Can it go into a while? And it's not going to be the exact tool. You're the most important thing. Yeah. So was I. Everybody, go on! <laughs> Thomas? At once, Inspector. Are you sitting comfortably? Most comfortably, Inspector! Um, before we speak, I must check no one else is in earshot. No one else is here, Inspector! Uh, very well. Miss Collymore, I have, I have found the weapon used to murder Cecil Havisham. Good Lord, where was it? In the library, lying on the table. Barrel warm and muscle still smoking. Someone killed Cecil with this. Yes, less than half an hour ago. But who? I was hoping you might be able to tell me that, Colin Moore. After all, we are friends, aren't we? I have no idea who killed Cecil Havisham. I was down in the kitchens when I heard the gunshots, fetching my sister some refreshment. 
line. Uh, I don't know what page you're on, man. I don't know what page you're on, man. <laughs> and besides, why would I want to... And besides, why would I want to uh, murder my oldest friend's younger brother? Perhaps because you found out about his affair with Florence. We all know you're a jealous man, Polymorph. Ruthlessly protective of your sister. Protective? I approve of whatever makes my sister happy. Oh, don't play the fool with me, Thomas. You shot Cecil in cold blood, and you know that wasn't the plan. show you something. Thomas, no doubt you'll find it interesting. Well, well, what is it? Oh, uh, uh, it's a newly written Charles, uh, a new draft of Charles's last one testament dated only today. It appears he has changed the beneficiary. Good Lord, who could he have changed the... Good Lord, who could he... Good Lord, that's right, he's leaving a torch of Parthens. Oh, the time has come. 
To confront Pagans and tell them we know what he has done. Get in the elevator, call him all at once, Inspector. in more detail. Thomas, please fetch my magnifying glass from Charles's desk. Without delay, Inspector. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Your magnifying glass, Inspector. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> Just thank you. What is matter? There is something you have not yet seen about that handkerchief. I'll get it. Good evening. It's for you, sir. Who is it, Arthur? Mr. Fitzroy, sir. Well, then hand me the receiver, Arthur. <laughs> At once, sir. a much more convenient time, thank you. <laughs> Another oh. transaction traced. A one-way ticket to Dover. No, I had no idea. 
Hello? <laughs> Fitzroy? Oh, there you are, Fitzroy. <laughs> Lost you, Lost you. I'll have you know you've put me in more pain than you can possibly imagine. I shall hang up the phone immediately and check my bank book. Excuse me. Florence, what do you have to say for yourself? I am no murderer! Uh, we all know that's not true. It is true, Inspector. You've been exposed. Very well, Florence. Your name can easily be cleared. We must examine Charles's body for any traces of cyanide poisoning. Collymore, Perkins, please show me to the service quarters so I can check the deceased once more. Yes, sir. And Arthur, uh -uh. you stay here no. with Miss no. Collymore Chris, Chris, and ensure she does not leave this no. room! Arthur, you've known me years. Surely you don't believe that I can do something like this. On the contrary, Miss Collymore, it was I who discovered you to be the guilty party. Oh, Arthur, how can you? Please, you must protect me from these fiends. <laughs> I'll do anything to win your... <laughs> Miss Collymore, you know I cannot resist your feminine charms. I've seen the way you look at me as I walk across the grounds. Even now, the way you're looking at me. <laughs> Even now, the way you're looking at me. <laughs> Even now, the way you're looking at me. I know how you feel. Please, Miss Collymore, I'm a simple guy. And you said before, oh, how great.
No, uh, no, yes. no, yes. uh, uh. Accusations have driven me to this. I feel faint, like I'm about to pass out. I suggest you calm down, Miss Collymore. Quickly, where is your medication? Blast. I must have left it in the study. <laughs> if you'll excuse me. Miss <laughs> Collymore. You are a vile criminal. <laughs> you have manipulated me. I've let down my master tonight. And all the while, you were plotting your fiancé's demise. Oh, Inspector, all these accusations, I feel an episode coming on. <laughs> an episode? What does that mean? What, I, what? I don't know, just do something. Uh, uh, Go 
away. No, come back, come back, please. Three, three, two, one. I found Florence's medication. <laughs> my, my. What's happened here? <laughs> Lawrence has fainted. There, there, Miss Collymore. Good Lord, I'll wake her up. <laughs> she is out cold. Uh, but Arthur, is this the same person you saw outside the window this evening? I cannot tell, Inspector. Mr. Collymore, please move her hand from her face. Of course it was. You were taken in by a false handkerchief, handed outside the window to frame Florence. She and Cecil both had motive for murder, but the true motive belongs to Perkins! Me, Inspector? Yes, you, Perkins. It appears Charles made Perkins the sole beneficiary it to his inheritance! Uh, save your pleading for the police station. Thomas, handcuff him to the chaise lounge, lest he escape before I can uh, take him there. That won't be for hours. The snow is at its peak. <laughs> it's not true, I tell you. What happened? I must have fainted. Curse my delicate. What happened? <laughs> oh, what happened? I must have fainted. Curse my oh, delicate hi. constitution. I must have Curse my delicate constitution. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm dress. We found out that Perkins committed the murder. Per Perkins? But he's such a kindly old man! Oh, the dress! It's sweet to the life all over you! I feel to you! This is all a misunderstanding. I didn't kill Charles, but I know who did! Who? who? Inspector Carter! <gasps> what on earth? Poppycock! You did it because Charles found out about the police money you were embezzling. Never! What of it? Charles found him. You were the hair You were the hair Listen, you can't prove it. But Charlie could. And that's why you killed him. Nonsense! So for what devil of a situation this is! Not so fast, Inspector! <laughs> Sabasham! Sir! Charlie! 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 I thought you were dead! You're alive! It's not possible! Oh, I'm afraid it is. You couldn't kill me that easily! How did you survive? I simply didn't drink the poison sherry you left out of me this evening. Charlie! I, Charlie! Oh, I can't bear it! Ever since we last spoke at the police station, it was clear you thought I was on you. So at that point, I became afraid you might try to kill me. For months now, I've had my guard up. Tonight, you fell into my trap. You've been hiding in the ground ever since this afternoon, and you planted poison. It was you that I saw. You were the mysterious figure. I thought it was strange how you got here so quickly. No! It was strange how you got here so quickly. How did such terrible weather? Any please? No! <laughs> but what about the handkerchief labeled with Florence? Why don't you ask Inspector Carter, or should I say, Inspector 
Frederick Carter. Move the money from the police's sundry accounts easily. Carter had access, and I had the means to move it fast and keep it secure. Or so I thought until this evening. Lie! This sets a damn death trap! This sets a damn death trap! Trevor! Oh. And as for Cecil, and as 
for Cecil, that is more crime of passion, nothing else. Now I hold in my hand a written list of every fraudulent transaction Thomas Collymore and Inspector Carter made. No! This can't be true! This can't be true! so quickly and telephoning you so soon. You rogue! Oh, oh, I trusted you, Carter, but you made a mistake tonight and I'm afraid it's your last! No! <laughs> Bank off! Become greedy and jealous. Um, 
sorry, Charles, my nerves are in shreds. There's a glass of sherry by the telephone. Ever the kind host. Drink it up. Thank you. Tell me, Thomas, one last thing. Anything, Charles. I'll tell no more lies. The glass of poison sherry the inspector left out for me this evening. What do you suppose I did with it? Well, I don't. <laughs> no. Charlie. You didn't. Charlie! No! Line! Bro, just die already! Bro, just die already! How dare you! You are a disgrace to this art form! I don't know who hired you, but I will make sure that mistake never happens again! Come at me! If men allow their conscience to be governed by avarice, then death in destruction shall prevail. Betrayed by my brother. Oh, come on! Cockatoos by my fiance, and almost murdered by my oldest friend. Let us hope we never again see a murder at Havisham Manor! Oh. <laughs> 